So the psalmist is showing us on today that there is deliverance in the word of God. You're asking God to order your steps. He's ordered it. You've been in it for a while. Now he said, because you've been in this for a while, your deliverance is going to come to you. Oh, yes, you're going to have a Job season. You're going to feel down and going to be a little broken. But on the same note, God is in the midst of that. It's a new beginning for you. It's a new life. New beginning, new life, and it's a new day. Welcome back to A Time of Empowerment and Inspiration with Dr. Augustina Frazier, where the word of the Lord is a lamp into your feet and a light into your path. I am so delighted to be here today with you to bring forth the word of God. I'm telling you, I'm so empowered on today, and I feel God's presence. Listen, we can do all things through Christ that strengthens us. I know our daily routine, I know things come at us and it challenges us, but I hear the Lord saying, you can do this through him. Remember, it is not about yourself, but it's about God's will. And you have to make sure that you're asking God, what is your will and what is your purpose for my life? Listen. Obstacles are supposed to come. Things are supposed to happen. That doesn't mean you're not supposed to do it or you're not supposed to be there. You're not supposed to say it. But it's just God's way of saying that you have to trust me. You have to have the confidence in me that whatever I give you, whatever task is before you, that you can do it all things through Christ that strengthens you. Now, time is of the essence, so I'm going to get into the sermon. On last week, I talked about the sermon was about being extricated. And today we're going to continue on the same subject. Last week, I took the sermon from Deuteronomy chapter 15, verses 12 and 9. And today, I'm going to conclude with it with verse number 1. What, is extrication? what does extrication mean? It means to be free from something or someone that constrains you or make it difficult for you. Not only a person, it could be a situation, it could, be a, it could just be anything. But God's saying, today, you are going to be extricated. Today is extricated. Let's look at some synonyms. Synonyms are designed to give you visualization and a sense of expression, meaning it expresses your feelings to empower you to accept and believe that it's all possible. Again, synonyms are, are designed to give you a visualization and a sense of expression where you express your feelings to empower you to accept or believe that you can do anything. Let's look at an example of some synonyms. I want you to repeat after me. I can. I can accept my freedom. I want you to say that to yourself. I can accept my freedom. I'm going to say, instead of saying I, Augustina can accept her freedom. Let's look at another word. I can accept my release. I can accept that I've been withdrawn. I can't accept that I've been disattached from that situation or even disconnected. So I know some of you are saying, I don't like, like the way this is feeling. I don't like how this transition happened. Well, God took the best way for you to let you know you're not in charge, but he's in charge of it. Remember, this is a season to be extricated from situations or people. Let's look at this perfect example in the Bible where the people of God were extricated. It's in Exodus 12. This is one of the most powerful deliverance in the Bible. Hallelujah. The people of God was in captivity for over 400 years. Some of you can't even take 400 seconds, 400 minutes, 400 weeks, 400 months. But these people were in captivity under new leadership that was the uh, man of God that was named Pharaoh for 400 years. And listen today. Sometimes we are in situations and we don't ever think we're going to get out of it. But God is sending me to tell you today that today is your day. He's made a promise to you, just like he made a promise to the children of Israel, that I will deliver you. Sometimes we're looking for people to deliver us. Sometimes we're looking for situations to um, bring us through. But God said he is the mighty deliverer. This is a memorial, God said to uh, Moses. Tell them this deliverance is a memorial meaning it is empowering us on today. It's a memorial, meaning you should never forget what God has done for you today. I want you to do some reflecting back on the things that God has brought you through to let you know that God is going to get you through that situation. Remember, we're talking about being extricated. 
Remember, execated means to be free. And that's what I hear in my spirit that many of you are saying. Can you get me out of this situation? Can you get me free from these drugs? Can you get me free from this alcohol? Can you get me free from the sh being shop addiction? Anything that's taking you away from yourself or taking you out of your character and taking you away from, from, the, um, from God, God said, I can do it. Let's look at this. Exodus 1 and 8 speaks on the oppression. Hallelujah. The people of God was under oppression and they were under the new leadership of Pharaoh. Oppression is when something holds you down. Oppression restrains you. Oppression takes away your peace. And I'm hearing on today, some of you haven't had peace in a long time. And you've been asking God to give you back your peace. The Bible said he would give you peace that pass of all understanding. If you keep your mind on him, he said he would keep you in perfect peace. And I guarantee you on today, for the word of God is a lamp into your feet and a light into your pathway. He is going to give you peace. I guarantee you when you get off this broadcast today, God is going to impregnate you with peace. Listen, I want you to also research the word of God and find scriptures that's going to give you peace, give you comfort, give you consolation with God because God is the author and the finisher of your faith. Listen, let's talk about a little more of what's going on in Exodus 1 and 8. The people of God had just came out of a great move in God. And at the time of this situation, the people of God were uh, multiplying, meaning God was birthing out of uh, uh, people left and right, that it was getting so, the uh, multitude of people were growing so largely that it was intimidating to Pharaoh. And let me tell you today, God is moving in your life and it is intimidating the enemy. The enemy seeing that you getting ready to succeed like never before. You getting ready to soar like an eagle and the enemy is angry. So he's trying to bring oppression, but say the devil is defeated. That's all you have to say is the devil is defeated and God is being exalted. Well, see, Pharaoh saw that the people of God were multiplying and exceedingly and they were going in mass of greatness of people. So let's move down to Exodus 1 and 15. Pharaoh saw that the multitude was growing exceedingly, what he couldn't control. So he put a, a decree out to kill all the male babies, to kill all the male babies by throwing them in, into the river, the Nile River. So that fear came upon the midwives because it said the people of God were waxing mightily. Hallelujah. They were maxing mightily. That means they were trusting God in everything that they that God had promised them. But the fear of God came upon the midwives when Pharaoh gave them that, that uh, decree to go out there and slay every male baby. Imagine the, uh, the, the, the stress that was upon every mother that this decree was out here that their babies was going to be destroyed because of the multitude of blessings that God was bringing forth for the people of God. So the, the, the decree that he gave to the midwives, the fear of God came upon them and they wasn't able to uh, fulfill what Pharaoh asked them to do. Now listen, that's powerful all by itself. When the enemy puts a hit out on you, God can come against it. He said, when the enemy come in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord can raise up a standard against it. And that is what God did for the people of God. <laughs> this is amazing to me. God raised up a standard against him. See, the enemy thought he had the power to keep the people under oppression. Now, remember, they were under oppression. But the Bible said that they begin to um, wax mightily, meaning they trust God. Even though they was under this oppression, they was believing God that God would take care of them. So with that being said, the midwife could not follow through what Pharaoh said. So Pharaoh said, he went to another level. He said, cast them all into the Nile River. Now I want to stop for a moment. 400 in the Bible means affliction. They were in captivity for 400 years, meaning they were under affliction. Some of you all are under affliction and you're saying to God, when am I going to get out of this? You know what came to my mind? Sometimes people can't even... 90, 99% of the time, people can't see what you're going through because we, we mask a lot of things. We put on the right outfit. We put on the right makeup. We have the right air do, male and female, that people can't see the affliction in your life. But God said he's been seeing this affliction and he's going to come to your rescue. 
Hallelujah. It says, many are the affliction of the righteous, but God delivers them out of them all. Well, the people of God was under this affliction for 400 plus years. You can find that uh, reference in Genesis 15 verses 13, where it talks about affliction. I'm going to jump down a little further. In Exodus 6, God made them a promise to Moses. He made a promise to them that he was going to deliver them. And see, that's what I love about the word. In spite of what you're going through, there is always something in the word of God that will relate to your situation. The Bible also says there is nothing new under the sun. So whatever you're going through, the, the Lord is saying to you on today, there is nothing new under the sun. Everything that you have gone through, he experienced it, even Jesus Christ himself. So even what you're going through, God said he can deliver you. Many are the affliction of the righteousness, and God deliver you out of them all. The Bible also said he sent his word to heal us of all of our diseases. So I'm saying unto you today, what you're going through, God said he got it. Hallelujah. There's a song that we said, um, what you need, God got it. He got everything that you need. Hallelujah. So I'm saying to you on today, God made a promise to the people of Israel in chapter six, verses one through eight, that he would, he promised them, hallelujah, that he would deliver them. However, it took time, hallelujah. It took time for their deliverance to come, but he guaranteed it through Moses that your deliverance is coming. Now, what is deliverance? Deliverance is freedom for whatever is oppressing you. Hallelujah. I feel God today. He's saying there's too many people that's oppressed and you've been coming before me with prayers and saying, deliver me. Listen, I want to talk to a few of you executive. Some of you are high up. Some of you are in great leadership. Some of you are successors, but you under oppression. And God's saying to you today, he said he's going to deliver you. Oh, glory to the name of Jesus. He said, your deliverance is coming even as I speak because he made a promise to you. You sold into people's life. You helped so many people. Some of you sold into people's life that didn't have vehicles. Some of them are without heat right now. You already wrote a check out to pay their heat and bill so they can get heat into their homes. But God said he is going to bless you on today. The only thing that God is saying in chapter 6, Verses 9, where Moses came to the people. After he spoke it to them, he said, I'm going to deliver you. Uh, I feel his presence right now. God said he's going to deliver you. But God said through Moses in verse 9, Moses spoke un so to, unto the children of Israel, but they didn't hearken unto his voice because they were under so much mental anguish because of the cruel uh, bondage that they were under. They were under cruel bondage. Even though you have multi-million dollars, even though you have a beautiful home, even though you have anything and everything that people want, God said you under cruel bondage. One thing you have not let go of is guilt. And God said he's going to deal with you uh, about the guilt. But he said he's going to deliver you uh, I don't know who this person is that God is dealing with me about, but he said, you have obtained great wealth uh, in the mighty name of Jesus. Uh, and you have helped so many people. Uh, but God said he going to make a way out of escape for you. Uh, he delivered before uh, and he's going to do it again. Uh, so the mental anguish that Moses was talking about, uh, it was disturbing the people's peace. Uh, and they couldn't think, oh God, uh, they was concentrating on all the bondage that they were under uh, and all the things that Pharaoh was doing to them. Uh, but they took their eyes off the prize. Uh, and that was the prize of Jesus Christ. Uh, so God said to you today, uh, get your eyes back on Jesus. Uh, you took it off of what he told you to do. Uh, and he wants you to get back focused on him. Uh, when he said he's going to deliver you, uh, he's going to deliver you. Uh, Listen, uh, the deliverance he's going to give you, uh, it's going to be a memorial to people. Uh, the Bible said uh, we overcome through our testimony. Uh, so your testimony is going to be to the people uh, what you were going through. Uh, listen, money is not the answer to everything. Uh, you're finding this out. Uh, 
because you can buy whatever you want to buy, uh, but you don't have the peace. Uh, so God said, uh, because you sold into so many people's life, uh, he's going to give you back your peace. Uh, listen, uh, the way you get over guilt uh, is asking God to give you back your peace. Uh, so repeat after me. Uh, say, God, give me back my peace. Uh, God, give me back my sanity. Because uh, some of you have lost your mind. Uh, and God said, I'm going to restore your mind. Uh, many are the affliction of the righteous. Uh, but God delivers you out of them all. Uh, listen. Uh, listen to me on today. Uh, what do exodus mean? Uh, exodus means to depart from something. Uh, you need to get away from it. Uh, you picked up on bad habits. Uh, God said... Uh, Get back to his word on today, uh, and you will feel better about yourself. Uh, get back to prayer and fasting. Uh, so many people uh, have given up on fasting, uh, but the Bible says uh, some things only come through uh, by fasting and praying. Uh, listen, uh, I want to say this to you. Uh, I've been on a fast since October 26, uh, 2018. Uh, I came off the fast two times. Uh, because I had a little virus. Uh, but then after the virus went past, uh, God said, get back on the fast. Uh, because he said, today, uh, yokes are going to be broken. Uh, people are going to come out of bondage. Uh, oh, God heard your prayers on today. Uh, he says, you want to come out of bondage. Uh, and he's going to deliver you on today. Uh, just like the Lord delivered the children of Israel. Uh, he's going to deliver you on today. Uh, Listen, uh, Moses uh, was before God. Uh, Moses was a prayer man, uh, a prayer man. Uh, he got before God uh, to ask for instructions. Uh, I also want to talk about this gentleman uh, by the name of Daniel. Uh, I love about Daniel. Uh, I mean David. Uh, David was a man after God's own heart. Uh, and it says in the Bible, uh, God always allowed David to, uh, to inquire of him. Uh, he said, some of you have not inquired of the things that you're involved with. Uh, and he told you no in the beginning, uh, but you took a chance. Uh, but now you're in a situation uh, that you need to be delivered. Uh, so he allowed you to stay in for a season uh, to teach you that you got to acknowledge God in all your ways, uh, that he can direct your path. Uh, Listen, today, uh, I didn't know I was going this way because uh, this is not in my notes, uh, but I feel the power of the Holy Ghost, uh, and he wants me to tell you, uh, you got to acknowledge him in all your ways uh, so he can direct your path. Uh, David is a good example. Uh, he inquired of the Lord, uh, should I do this? Uh, should I go up against the people of uh, the, the enemy? Uh, and God will show him. Uh, exactly what to do. Uh, so today God said, uh, if you yield your hands up to me right now uh, and say to me, Lord, what to do, uh, God is going to show you what to do. Uh, he said he don't let down a trusting soul. Uh, and he said he reigned on the just and the unjust. Uh, so let me say this to you. Uh, when God dealt with Moses uh, during the season that the children of Israel was in captivity, uh, he gave them a uh, he gave them the Ark of the Covenant, uh, and that was considered the table, two, tape, two stone tables of the Ten Commandments. Uh, so the people of God would have instructions. Uh, so I need you to get before God and get your instructions. Uh, the commandments are for everyone. Uh, but I believe God has no respect of person. Uh, if you get before him today, uh, he will show you what you should do uh, about a situation. Uh, I even hear God saying, uh, you wealthy young man, uh, you wealthy young woman, uh, God told you to sow into people's life, uh, and you question him. Uh, he said he told you to sow a seed. Uh, sow a seed into their life uh, so that people can get ahead. Uh, you know, people are trying today, uh, and they're stepping out in faith like I did with this broadcast. Uh, in the name of Jesus. Uh, so a covenant means... Uh, to make an agreement with God uh, or make an agreement between you and God uh, or you and an individual uh, or a, a situation. Uh, so God is saying to you on today, uh, make an agreement between you and him uh, so that you can get on the right track uh, 
so you can acknowledge him in all your ways, uh, so you'll know when he's speaking to you, uh, so you'll know the difference when it's yourself, uh, you'll know the difference when it's the enemy, uh, in the mighty name of Jesus. Uh, so I'm going to say this to you, uh, an insert, God said, uh, because you're going through a deliverance, uh, you got to put on the whole armor of God, uh, and that's a belt of truth, uh, that's the breastplate of faith, uh, that's the uh, that's the gospel with your feet set for preparation. Uh, that's the shield of faith. Uh, that's the helmet of salvation. Uh, let me pause here. Uh, some of you are not protecting your mind uh, with the word of God, uh, and the word of God is a protection of your brain. Uh, so you can be careful what comes in, uh, or you can be careful with the sword, the the fiery darts that come against your mind. Uh, and God said He would do it just like He's saying. Uh, you also need the sword. Uh, in the mighty name of Jesus. Uh, I'm getting close to the end of the sermon. Uh, the Lord dealt with me on yesterday uh, in prayer, the word rape. Uh, so many of you have been raped against things. Uh, rape is not only a physical situation. Uh, rape can be financially. Uh, rape can be emotionally. Uh, rape can be mentally. Uh, rape can be physically. Uh, rape can be spiritually. Uh, and God is saying to you on today, uh, he wants to talk to the rape victim too uh, because he want to come against your, your emotional state, uh, your psychological state, uh, and your finance, and even sexually. Uh, I also heard the Lord say some of you are feeling a lot of pain uh, because you've been raped of many ways. Uh, you've been raped because a lying spirit has been against your name. Uh, your identity crisis has been against your name. Uh, and you also digest false hope. Uh, you have told yourself you couldn't make it. Uh, but the Bible said we can do all things through Christ. Uh, that strengthen you. Uh, and the Bible says that God said he will never leave you nor forsaken you. Uh, so I want to say to you uh, again, uh, some of you have been raped uh, and you've gone into a rage. Uh, and the rage is subconscious. Uh, so you don't see your anger against people. Uh, you're in a professional setting. Uh, Sometimes you're in your home. Uh, Sometimes you're even on a pulpit. Uh, and the manifestation of this rage come out. Uh, and it's offensive to people uh, because you don't have an awareness of yourself. Uh, so God told me to tell you today, uh, take another look. Uh, I heard a sermon several months ago uh, called Take Another Look. Uh, take another look and see what God is doing for you. Uh, take another look and see that God is going to bring you through. Uh, Take another look and see that God is able to do anything. Uh, but I want you today uh, to deal with that rage. Uh, and I also want you to deal with the guilt uh, that, has suppressed your, that has suppressed your heart. Uh, and I'm closing, getting to the end. Uh, I did want to speak for a couple minutes about Deuteronomy chapter 15, uh, verse 1, uh, which is the year of release. Uh, I see you see where I'm going with this. Uh, you've been released, my sister. Uh, You've been released, my brother. Uh, You've been released, my pastor. Uh, You've been released, the CEO. Uh, You've been released, leadership. Uh, You've been released, this baby that's in the mother's womb. Uh, You've been released, mother. Uh, You've been released, brother. Uh, You've been released to go forward in God. Uh, but this man here, let's talk about it. Uh, Deuteronomy chapter 1, uh, it says, At the end of every seven years, uh, thou should grant you a release. Uh, and the release is coming from uh, Deuteronomy chapter 12 and verse 9, uh, because that was a season that people were enslaved uh, and bought with a price to be a slave. Uh, but on the seventh year, it was, a, it was, in, it was written in law uh, that they had to be released no matter what. Uh, and God said, you have served your time to this situation, but he wants to know if you learn what he needs you to learn, a year of release. A year of release, the Lord is saying. He wants me to repeat it again. You've been released. It goes a little further, and it says that in uh, Leviticus uh, 25 and Exodus 21, it talks about how the Hebrew uh, uh, people were enslaved to the people, to their master. And at the end of every seven years, God did grant them a release. But the significant part was not only they was released for their freedom, but they also release, receive the release of their debt. So God is saying to you on today, even the debt that you have in your life, God said he's going to grant you a release of it. 
you will not owe anything of it. And listen, this is not Augustina's word. This is the word of God. That's why I said the word of God is a lamp into your feet and a light into your pathway. I would personally say to you about three days ago, I was in prayer and I heard the Holy Spirit say to me, I'm going to cancel all your debt, Augustina. And I, I begin to cringe because sometimes when you hear something so powerful, it's hard to wrap your emotions around it and to believe it. But when God says he's going to release you of your debt, he's going to do it. And again, this is not Augustina word. This is God's word. He said he's going not only going to release you from slavery, what you were enslaved to, but he also is going to grant you a debt release. I don't know where it's going to come from. I don't know who's going to do it, but I do know the Lord showed me in the beginning of this sermon, which is not in my notes, that there's some wealthy people that's supposed to bless people. And God said he's going to double portion you as you sow into people's life and help them through situations. Sometimes people dead is not because they um, mismanage their money. Sometimes they're single parent household. Sometimes they're widows. Sometimes they're widowers. Sometimes they made bad uh, 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 decisions on businesses whatever it is, but God has forgiven them for it. And he wants you to bless them that they have a, a release of their debt. Again, this is not my word. This is God's word. Read, Deuteron De read Deuteronomy chapter 15, verse one. It said, not only he is the year of release, but it's a debt release. So I'm going to close, get down to the end of this sermon. There's also something that God dealt with me in Leviticus, Leviticus 25, verse 47, verse through 55 is the redemption of servants. It was a redemption of service. And what do redemption means? It means that you action of being saved. And truly, I want to close with this. That's what Christ died on the cross for us today, that we will be redeemed through the blood for our sins. And if you don't know Christ on today, I need you to take God at his word and look at Acts 2 and 38. Look at uh, uh, Matthew 19 about your soul salvation because that's the key to uh, redemption is that your sins are being forgiven. Some of you are saying I'm making the same mistakes, but God said he can help you through that by giving your life to Christ. See, there's a lot going through this sermon. There's so much I want to get out of here, get to you, but I gave you all that God wanted me to give you. So I want to thank you again for tuning in this this afternoon to this broadcast I'm, I'm certain that it bless your soul because it's not about augustina but it's about your soul being being um being uh, free from bondage and it's about your soul having peace and i want you to have peace in your mind let me close with a prayer father in the name of jesus we're so grateful on today for our brothers and sisters that's tuned into this broadcast we ask that you would grant them the desires of their heart and you know their needs. We're asking, oh God, that you would take them through their situation and bring great deliverance that they have a memorial to share with God. Himself.